So welcome, people of God. So I want to share with you a really strong word of encouragement. This is going to be a prophetic word that I'm going to release over you. And I pray this word will locate, land, and live in you. In my time with the Lord this morning, something that came up during my time with the Lord and really honestly has been the story of my life the last couple of years like like honestly consistently and persistently this has been the story of my life and it has been to intentionally live grow move and have my being in the goodness of God in the goodness of God is where I consistently and persistently have my being and I want to say this to you do not listen to anything or anyone that would have you validating not living in the goodness of God. Don't listen to anyone. Do not do not let that thing locate you, land and live because there is too much already in us that would hold on to that and validate that. There are too many words out here that want to continually tell us, oh, there's purpose behind your pain. There's a testimony behind this test. And so people hear that and they think, okay, okay, I'll stay stuck. I'll stay in this. God is using this for his goodness. Let me tell you something. And I've, I've taught this to you. There are examples in the Bible, right? Even Joseph, who in Genesis 50 and 20 says, what was meant for evil, God will use it for good. Well, there, there is a king in the book of Psalms that comes behind Joseph that said, listen, it wasn't purpose for evil. There was a king that God had in mind to put in front of the famine. Do you hear me? Do you? Joseph didn't know what Joseph knew in Genesis 50 and 20. In the book of Job, there is, there is an encounter where we see God. We literally see God offer to Satan a man of God. We actually see this. We actually see the voice of God say, have you considered my servant Job? Yet, the Bible also shows us that in Job 3, Job was already in agreement and fearing this type of thing happening. He said, this thing I feared has come upon me. You see that? I remember, listen, I remember hearing somebody say years ago, how many times the word fear was in the Bible. And so before I started to record this word, I looked it up. I looked it up in a translation of the Bible. And the word fear was in this translation of the Bible 501 times. And then I looked up the word good, and the word good was in the same translation of the Bible 778 times. Good triumphs over fear. Good trumps fear. Do you hear me, people of God? This is why, as New Testament Christians, we have the finished work of the perfect prophet. We have the finished work. Listen, the reason why he could be a sacrifice for me and you is because he knew no sin. He reconciled us to the blessings of Abraham. He redeemed us from the curse that Moses talked about to the children of Israel. So we get to sit, live, and have our being in being blessed in the city and blessed in the field, blessed in our comings and blessed in our goings. This is why when you read about him being introduced, in, in, the, in the front of the Gospels, all you read is good news. He comes bringing good news. Oh, you got a problem? I got some, he got some good news. You've been stuck? Good news. You can't hear? Good news. You're blind? Good news. You demonized? Good news. You, you don't have no money? Good news. In the Gospels, he is introduced as being the bearer the teacher, the preacher, the prophet of good news. Go read it. It's there. The word good news is what they use to introduce Jesus Christ. Yet we out here still validating pain as purpose. 
No, when pain was introduced in the Bible, it was a part of the curse. Do you hear me? God said to man, anything you get in this world, all your toiling will be pain. Women, anything, anytime you birth anything, it'll be pain. We are redeemed people of God. Stop validating everything bad in your life like it's God, it's God. It's God. God can't get to you no other way than through pain, than through bad stuff, than through having a mediocre hard life. It, that's a problem. That's a problem. And you need to say, okay, <laughs> I am mature enough I don't have to go through hell every time you're trying to get something. No, I, I don't have to. I don't have to talk to my children as teenagers the way I did when they were young. You know, when a baby get ready to touch something, sometimes you can't even articulate to them. You're like, ah, ah, ah don't do that. No, my children know better. They know better. Do you hear me? When we read that scripture about discipline, who, as an adult, still needs to be disciplined by their parent? That's why the church is, does not preach maturity. People just want to be stuck in pain all the time. Oh, I've been, I've been praying about this thing for 10 years, and, and you think that's God? You validated you being there all that time, and that's God? That's what's been taught and preached and prophesied and I am telling you I saw the performance of God in goodness and didn't recognize it and didn't recognize it and God had to and that's why I consistently and persistently the word that we have for this month is agreement so before this month is over I, I just came to touch down real quick and tell you you want to have a strong fourth quarter that's cool you want to not leave this year empty-handed that's that's cool but if you want to live a life an abundant life that jesus said is yours for the taking in john 10 and 10 you better get in agreement with the good news i'm not living no painful mediocre testing trials tribulation and trouble type of christian life that they out here preaching from the from the pulpit. No, no 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 you listen to somebody in the pulpit i'm listening to the word of god i'm listening to the bible life more abundantly you better get in agreement with the aggressive goodness of god all day every day in your life in these stores in these streets in your home i am blessed that's what the word of god promises me you better live in that thing and not let these people out here legalize pain and trouble and toiling in your life trying to enter the promised land with a grasshopper mentality, trying to have a marriage, still thinking that you ain't good enough, legalizing having issues from childhood. The devil is a liar. A liar. A liar. I had to get in agreement with the goodness of God. Not, not circumstantial, not seasonal, not oh, oh, about this time tomorrow. No, 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 no. My tomorrow is now all day every day i am in agreement with the goodness of god i live i move i have my being in the goodness of god do you hear me my life is incubated protected covered and smothered in the goodness of god that's what i'm in agreement with that 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 is what life goes well exemplifies that's not something that's just on Fridays. That's not something that's just a holiday word. That's not something that's just a fourth quarter word. I want you under the anointing and the authority of the word that we have from God for agreement to get in agreement with the goodness of God. I don't want you to qualify the goodness of God based on what you're going through. I want you to right now decree over your life, prophesy over your own life, from this day forward, I am in agreement with the aggressive goodness of God all day, every day concerning my life. And I'm not listening to nobody that preaches, teaches, and prophesies anything contrary. I don't care if all hell has broken loose in my life. I, it's good over here. <laughs>